Hi, this is Tali Berman, Autism Specialist and Author, and welcome back to my series on Autism and Education. This is part two. Part two. This is part two, and in the first part, if you haven't yet seen that that video, um, you can click the link below to get access to that video. It's important to first understand why is it even important to give your child access to knowledge? Why is it important to give your child an education? And I'm talking about a peer level appropriate education. So if you haven't seen part one of this video, I encourage you to check that out first. All right, check out video one first. Now this video is gonna be the first piece on how to do that. Right, so we talked about all the reasons why and the importance of, you know, I'll just hit on a couple right now, um, a way to develop your child's self-esteem because he has intelligence within him that he might not be able to demonstrate, but is absolutely in there. And how it can help him also reduce his anxiety and stress around the world as he begins to understand more about the weather, the days of the week, the holidays, how his body works, how his body changes. By the way, especially important when you're talking about a kid who might be going through puberty. Right, so other kids typically get some kind of education around how your body changes, what to expect as your body grows. And if you don't talk that way to your child with autism, then all of this growth he's going through and all this transformation he might be experiencing, he's completely unprepared for. Okay, so how do you do it? What you want to do is basically give your child exposure. So what I recommend that you do is gather materials. This can be materials um, either from the internet, this can be from textbooks that um, children in your child's grade or maybe just the year below are using. You can go to the library and ask for textbooks or materials for your child's age, right? And gather together a variety of topics. So I would gather things like books on science. This could be nature science, this could be how your body works, you know, science in terms of the weather. This can be books on inventors and biographies of important people who've done some amazing things. This can be books or content on music, art, poetry, geography. You know, um, when I grew up, it was called social sciences, learning about other parts of the world, different countries, what kind of people live in those countries, what kind of foods they eat, what kind of language they speak, helping your child really give a variety of topics to help him learn more about his world. Animals, you know, what different kind of animals they are, where they live, their habitat, the kind of things all kids will learn. And break down that content into sort of more manageable pieces. So maybe it's like a couple paragraphs worth of information. Right, or um, you know, a page is a page worth of information, but with high content. And simply begin to go into a room together where it's not so distracting, where you and your child can have time together, and begin to simply read the information to your child. And start off by saying, I believe in your intelligence. And if I haven't done this yet, I apologize for not teaching you what you deserve to learn. So I'm gonna read you some a story here about tigers. I'm gonna to read to you a little bit about South America. I'm gonna to read to you a little bit about how bread is made. I'm gonna to read to you about how your body digests food, whatever the topic is. And simply, clearly, in an animated way, begin to read that content to your child. That's all, that's all that first piece is. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about how you can assess your child's understanding, but for now, it's just about giving that content to your child. All right, you can also do this in the form of audiobooks, um, is where your child's really listening to that kind of material. Um, what's nice about reading it, right, or possibly even drawing elements of it or having pictures, is it's helpful for children who are both visual learners and audio learners because they can hear what you're saying and also have a way to hook in from a visual perspective by either seeing what you're drawing or seeing the pictures that demonstrate what you're talking about. So really the main step here today is Give your child exposure to a variety of topics. And once we do that, you'll begin to get an assessment and understand where does your child's interest lie? We have no idea. Maybe your child loves science. Maybe your child loves geography. Maybe your child learns, loves to learn other languages. Maybe your child loves to learn more about inventions. But only once you give your child that exposure will we get to understand what he, what he is actually interested in. And I wanna share with you, by the way, that. The inspiration for all that I'm sharing with you today is RPM. All right, if you haven't checked out this book yet, Understanding Autism Through RPM, which stands for Rapid Prompting Method, 
Um, this for me was a really important education. There's a whole series of books. I would start with this red one here. Um, I'm reading one of the other ones right now, but it really is eye-opening and understanding more about the importance of education and actually specifically how to do it. So I haven't made any of this up. <laughs> this is all part of my ongoing education as an autism specialist. So the first piece is give your child exposure to a variety of topics or information that you find on the internet through books and through textbooks. Now, you might see your kid flapping, walking, pacing while you're doing it. That's okay, I think there's a common misconception that that means that he's just not available, he's not listening, he's not interested. But the truth is, your child just might really need to be regulating himself. And while he's regulating himself, doesn't mean he's not available or interested in what you're sharing. He just might not be able to show it the way other kids do. He just needs to occupy and manage that system while he's learning. So don't make that mean he's not interested or he's not listening. It could very well mean it's just what he needs to do, take care of himself and keep going through the content, keep going through the material. So that is the step for today. Now that you have a basis of why it's important is to begin to gather together higher level content to share with your kid, to begin to teach your child about the world. This could be a really exciting process. So I'd love to hear from you. What is one thing you're taking away from this video? Leave your comment below. And if you're watching this anywhere other than my blog, please hop on over to www.tollyberman.com and leave your comments below.